three Pete and what do you think? Did, wh- why not, right? For you, Con? Why not? Yeah, I wouldn't put it past them because they're going to have players come back. I think there's a very good chance that Donovan Klingon comes back. They're going to lose Tristan Newton and Camp Spencer. Those guys are out of eligibility. And I think Stefan Castle, their freshman, will go into the draft. He's going to be highly rated and, uh, and highly coveted. Uh, but having Klingon back and Samson Johnson and some of the guys they have on the bench that are good players, Solomon Ball is a really good player. And they'll go into the portal. They've got really good freshmen coming in. I don't, I don't see an end to the national competitiveness just because they're going to lose some players. And look what they lost last year and win it again. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is, they, they're the real deal. And Danny Hurley is the real deal. And, uh, and they're not going anywhere. N- not at all. What do you think of that moment where <laughs> I, I didn't see it live uh, because the ref seemed to warn Hurley for what I thought was language. And then there was a turnover. Then they gave the ball. They gave the ball to Purdue. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And then the TBS CBS cameras caught it. He got, he went on the floor. He shoved his player like to say, move, you know, like run the play. Uh, what did you think of when you saw that? Jay. I did. I, I was calling the game courtside for ESPN International. Right. So I'm a I'm a huge star in Micronesia right now. Our ratings were <laughs> through the roof. Uh, but uh, I I didn't see that happen. I was like, what what happened? I mean, was it a five second violation or something that he didn't dribble when he was closely guarded? And then we saw the replay as well. And I, I haven't really, honestly, I can't remember having seen that before. I've seen coaches out on the floor and I've seen guys, uh, you know, push a player, you know, to get back in the game or something like that. But I'd never seen it when a guy was actually holding the ball. <laughs> and there was another uh, another exchange after Zach Eady had set a pretty violent pick. There was nothing illegal about it. But he set a pretty violent pick. Right. There was a timeout and he was walking by Hurley and those two exchanged words. <laughs> And uh, and I was thinking, you know, if that doesn't show what a competitor Dan Hurley is, because I think Zach Eady with his left thumb could could crush uh, Danny Hurley like a like a soda, an empty soda can if he wanted to. Um, I just thought I thought it was funny. I, I know he, I'm pretty sure he got warned about that because I saw the officials kind of talking to one another about that exchange. But but I thought, I, overall, I thought it was pretty funny because I, I don't he would have been like Van Gundy hanging on to <laughs> Alonzo Morning, morning by the ankle. Yeah, I mean, and it probably would have been worse than that. Uh, that that was and that was Van Gundy's toughest moment as a human being. I, I, he showed the most moxie or spunk or whatever other STD you can think of. Oh, my God, because he, he uh, yeah, we had Leitner on the show the other day, Jay, and you talked about meeting Danny Hurley for the first time through Bobby and how he was busting Danny's stones, and it got awkward fast. He said it got it got really weird and awkward fast. There, there, well, first of all, there's no one who Leitner wouldn't bust their stones. Right. I mean, I was a grad assistant when he was a player, and uh, he was he was relentlessly brutal in that, but... But the Hurley family, you know, that Jersey City stuff, they don't back down to anything. Uh, So I'm not surprised that it got awkward. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 